right. Good evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board to order. It is 7 p.m. on March 1st, 2021. My name is Kate McCarthy, and I am the chair of the Development Review Board. And to get everybody introduced, what I will do in this Zoom environment is I will go around and uh, say people's names, give them a chance to unmute themselves and say hello, starting with Vice Chair Kevin O'Connell. Um, here. Hello. And Joe? I'm here. There's Joe. Hi, Joe. Rob? I'm here. Hi, Rob. Roger? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Roger. And then um, Michael? Good evening, Kate. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. And we are being recorded um, by and recorded by and streamed on Orca Media. We're also joined by um, Tammy Furry, who is our recording secretary and staff, Meredith Crandall. So thank you all for being here. Um, let's get underway with um, the staff review of our remote meeting procedures, um, for which I will turn to Meredith. Hey, right, give me one second. I wanna share my screen for anybody watching via Orca so they can get the login information. All right, so if anybody is watching via Orca Media and decides that they want to participate in the meeting versus watch it, you can log in using this link here, which will take you directly into the Zoom meeting. You can also call in using this phone number and use the meeting ID number here in bold. If you have any problems accessing the meeting, please feel free to email me and I will do my best to help you that way. Um, so, uh, do, 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 do. If you're having difficulties while you're, once you're into the Zoom meeting and you're using the, the video conferencing features, um, you can message me or through the chat function and actually probably be sent one to everybody, but you can also send it to just me, hope, asking you to please keep the chats to technical issues um, and keep any procedural issues or substantive issues to the actual recording. Um, as Kate said, the Zoom meeting is being recorded and stream live via Orca Media, turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, and please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. If you're participating by phone, you can use star six that allows you to mute through Zoom and we'll actually see the little image that shows that you're muted. If you sign in, if you're not on right now, right now we don't have any members of the public other than an applicant. Um, but if somebody does sign in and wants to talk on a particular matter, let us know what that is when you log in, or I'll assume it's the only application we have on tonight, but you never know. Um, and you can raise your hand if you're on the phone using star nine. Um, I'm gonna skip over some of that participation information. Um, doo -doo -doo. A quick little thing for anybody watching via Orca Media, this link here will take you to the city's agenda and meeting materials website. And you can use that page to navigate down to tonight's meeting and pull up all of the agenda materials that were submitted um, ahead of the hearing so as of last Thursday. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting and I find out about it, um, which would probably be via email, it will be continued to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications. Um, that will sometimes then let the sound come through better. And again, if you're having screen share issues watching the screen share, you can use this link to get to the same materials that we're all looking at. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call. I'll now hand this back over to the chair. Very good. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so what I would like to, Meredith, would this be a good time for you to make me host and peek at the other meeting while we're doing the approval of the agenda and the minutes? Um, I, can, I should, if, if there was anybody there in the waiting room, I would oh, be you know. else from Zoom saying, hey, you have people waiting for you because that meeting again was supposed to start five minutes ago. I have oh, I understand. Them. Okay. Also. All right. We'll rely on those emails to, from Zoom to let you know if there's someone in a different meeting. Okay. I'll carry on. So the next item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as printed? Motion by Kevin. Oh, is that a motion, okay. Kevin? It is. I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Yes. That's okay. 
I saw your hand. And is that a second from Roger? Yes, second. Very good. Um, is there any discussion? Yeah, I'll call the roll. Kevin? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Roger? Yes. Michael? Yes. I also vote yes, so we've approved the agenda. Thank you. Um, there are no comments for the chair, which is from the chair, which is the next agenda item. So we'll move on to approving the minutes, uh, reviewing and approving the minutes of January 19th. The last time we met, it's been a while. Wow, oh, that has been a while. It really has. <laughs> um, are there any changes to the minutes as printed? Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes of January 19th as printed? So moved. Motion by Roger. Yeah. Second by Rob, thank you. We'll call the roll. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Roger? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So we've adopted the minutes of our last meeting. Very good, uh, thank you. With that, we will move on to our first and only application for the day, which is for 54 Liberty Street, a proposal to build a new garage, and we are reviewing it for slopes, the slopes provision of our zoning bylaw, as well as because of the request for a nine foot retaining wall, which is over what we would, what is the standard amount. Um, so usually I, hand it over to Meredith and she get, gives a summary and then Will, I'll hand it over to you. I'll, I'll swear you in and um, have you tell us a little about the project and then we'll walk through the staff report. All right, <laughs> great. Um, and I'm, I'm, my, my view of the screen is telling me that the only person to, here to be heard on this is, is Will. As of now, Don was trying to get in, but okay. he is just on standby. I mean, I pretty much, cover everything. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Very good. We'll stay tuned for Don if necessary. Um, all right, Meredith, is there anything you want to add? I didn't mean to steal your thunder there with the... Okay. Um, I mean, as you said, the, the main issue here is steep slopes. Um, I did get some clarifying information that Will's going to bring in um, that I'm going to suggest that maybe he try and bring in at the beginning of his discussion. Um, including about the height of the retaining wall, because it appears I may have misread the engineering drawings about the height of that wall. Um, and we, Will and I weren't able to figure that out between the two of us in email. So um, that's one thing to note. Uh, and yeah, I mean, steep slopes are the main thing that I've highlighted in my staff report. There are a few other questions here and there, but I think that with the new information Will's gonna provide that he'll clear up a lot of those situations, those questions. Great. Okay, thank you. So Will, what I'll do next is swear you in. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please raising your right hand. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Thank you. All right, please go ahead and um, introduce the project. And Meredith referenced some, uh, some new information about the retaining wall height. Um, are you also going to be presenting information now about the post-construction grades that the Department of Public Works asked about? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's some of that that is addressed in the um, staff report um, that essentially we're sort of really not changing any grades. Okay. We're kind of just, the, the hillside is sort of maintaining its current status and we're just shifting, you know, taking apart a completely failed garage shifting it over to within the setbacks and sort of bringing the existing natural grades back to um, sort of the way they were, um, okay. short of having a retained parking area on the west side of the, the garage. Um, I think the main element that Meredith was um, mentioning about the, the retaining wall is that it's, it's a nine foot wide retaining wall not necessarily a nine foot tall. It'll sort of step down and sort of wrap around um, as needed. Um, so that parking space is, you know, eight feet wide by 18, I think, forget what the specifics is, but you know, enough per the zoning regulations for the appropriate size. Um, I can share my screen if I can here. Let's see, does that work? Could, so we can look. That's can I just ask a, a quick question before we can? Sure, Kevin. Continue. Yeah, just, is there an, an existing garage that's going to be yeah, removed? Yeah, it is, it is very failed. 
Yeah, I, I, that, okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, that's it, thank yeah, you. Pretty much tucked right up to the property line, yep. you know, the, the yep. and, and uh, to the point where the concrete contractor advised me not to stand in there. Right. Can you all see this thing here? Yeah, I just have another question here uh, before we get started. Uh, yeah. Do you think that you could send this to Meredith and have her send it around? Just because I did send the... it to Meredith. Okay. The most recent, you know, there's been okay. a slew of different. Um, I don't know. It just might be easier for all of us to be looking at the same thing when it's not being shared. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did email Meredith this, you know, final updated um, site plan from January. Um, but yeah, it shows the location of the, the garage, you know, essentially footprint foundation 26 wide by 22 deep um you know parking for one car um patio area here and then um yeah this is the retaining wall area on this side of the on the, the property the west side whereas this is the retaining wall that will sort of be stepping down to sort of capture that slope. But other than that, you know, as you can see, the sort of the, the existing grades will sort of be, you know, returned um, naturally with this retaining wall and then the step foundation. So we're not really changing any of the existing grades other than what's necessary for construction. So may I just restate that and make sure I, I, I understand it. So the place where the um new garage is going is currently sloped but you're making yes. it, you're making it flat for the garage the uh no it's basically a stepped foundation so the back the north side of the garage will be a full nine you know full retaining wall part of the foundation then it will step down to be sort of at grade on the front side this this will help you sort of clarify it a little bit better okay uh, you can see the sort of stepped up hillside here um, and then this is, you know, a oh, cool. conceptual retaining wall showing how it sort of keys into the hillside. So, okay. I believe that the, um, one of the application papers shows the, um, existing condition of the garage and how it's keyed into the hillside, some, some existing site photos. Okay, good. Well, that that helps us get oriented. Is there any other um, overview you'd like to provide or other images that you want to share to orient us further before we um, dive into the zoning criteria? I mean, I think here's, here's the um, another document that was provided from the homeowners that shows the um, 2004 DPW permit for connecting the, um, you know, this is, this is sort of related to Kurt's main comment. And so his comments were from sort of the first round. I mean, the backstory is, is this project was supposed to happen last year and then obviously COVID and then delayed for a year. <clears throat> so his comments were in relation to the, um, the first draft of the site plan um, and mainly the storm water from the patio and then the gutter downspouts tying into an existing um, footer drain for the house. So we got the DPW document from 2004 um, with Tom McCardle's signature um, and the conditions for inspection to connect to the stormwater system. So I also emailed this to Meredith as well. So this is now part of the official record. Um, but okay. so we will be dealing with that appropriately in the in in best, best possible way. Okay. So what you sorry, what you were showing us from 2004 was it was that a permit or an application for a permit? This was um, an approved uh, appears to be a construction and access permit. Okay. From the previous owner with the contractor scope of work, you know, connecting to the CD28. I'm assuming that's the, the stormwater labeling manhole. Um, yeah, and so do not inspect until DPW inspection. And so okay, well let's talk yeah, about that. A little, let's talk about that a little more when we get to the stormwater criteria. In case there are um, 
circumstances that lead to a reevaluation of the way stormwater is handled here 16 years on. Um, there may or may not be. Um, okay, so here's the site plan. Great. Yeah. All right, so um, any quest any other questions from board or board members, just a general orientation before we dive in. I see Roger's got his hand up. Hey, yes, thank you, Kate. Um, this may not be relevant to the particulars of the ordinance, but looking at those pictures that uh, those uh, images that will put up on the screen, it kind of looked like if you back out of the garage in the wrong way, you're going to come crashing down into a, a much lower area. Is that, I mean, is that it? I'm just kind of curious about that looking at the picture. Let's look at that again. That does pertain to site access and circulation. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get our bearings. You know, these are sort of conceptual yeah. drawings that, you know, I mean, there's an existing, you know, flat parking spot up there. Um, these are nowhere near, you know, grade, you know, draw, you know, proposed grading. This is me. And then obviously I hand things off to Grenier. To, um, assess the sort of <clears throat> right, but if you if you just move move back a little bit, um, it looks like if you backed out of the garage directly, oh, yeah, then then you this car, the car would go plummeting down into that lower. I mean, that's area. you know, I mean, there is there's a slight grade. I mean, yeah, but um, it's definitely going to be flat. I mean, as I said, this is this is rough conceptual, but you know, I mean, the plan would be is to create basically, and there's no way to turn around up there. I mean, you can only drive up forwards and then back down. Oh, okay, I I see the area that looks like you just plummet off. That's actually the house. Yeah, that's the house. So if I was to, oh, right, I got it. Yeah. I'll okay. Pick, uh, you know. Yeah. That's okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so it's there. We you know, go. If you look on the site. Oh, okay. All Back right. Out of the house right here. So I mean, we're just okay. making it a little bit more of a turn that you have to kind of go yeah, yeah. into the parking yeah. spot. You still have yeah. to back, but this whole area right up here is essentially going to be sort of flat. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Will. It's yep. still a challenging drive, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, and part of the reason is was that you know I think the homeowners a few years well. I don't know when it happened, but the city regraded the Liberty Street sidewalk. They used to have like yeah, right. the bottom of their driveway was two feet higher. Yeah, a few years ago, and then they yeah. redid the sidewalk and it dropped it down. So the driveway got even steeper. <clears throat> um, and so it's it's challenging. I mean, it's not unusual for Montpelier. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Um, well, thank you. Let, with that, let's let's turn to the staff report. Um, Will, have you gotten a copy of the staff report? I have. Okay. Yeah. Meredith, Meredith is very good about doing that, but I always like to ask anyway. Um, yeah. So what what I would like to do, and I want to check with my fellow board members. Um, I would like to let's go to the view where we can all see each other because we all have the staff report. Um, since we're mostly looking at section 3007 and section and then the special use standards for the for the tall wall, I'd like to start with those two questions and then we can go back and um, get any additional information we need for the um, other criteria. Does that does that work for other board members? That, that works for me, uh, uh, Kate. I, I think that's a, a very rational way to, to go about it. Excellent. Okay. Good. All right, there we all are. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's look. I'm sorry, I'm using two computers here. Um, we're going to start with section 3007, steep slopes. And in our staff report, that begins on, if you're looking at just the staff report, it's page five. So um, this, has, as Meredith has summarized for us, this is this. Um, is to make sure that we are um, minimizing, we have a few purposes here that we're trying to evaluate. Protect public safety and property, minimize the potential for erosion, runoff, flooding, and degradation of water quality, and avoiding the increased cost of providing service to remote or difficult to access land. 
Okay. So we have these, um, the, the disturbance threshold has been met here and that's why we're looking at an engineered plan um, and a hearing. So um, the comments from Meredith um, on page five were the issue that I brought up earlier, which is that the proposed contours for after, um, after construction were, were unclear in the drawings as, as they were understood when, when submitted. But we, we've just talked about that. So I wanna, um, I wanna check with board members um, to see if you have questions about the, the, the contours and the, the impact on the contours going from today's state with a garage all the way scooted up to the property line um, to the proposed state with a garage scooted in a little bit. Um, I forget the word you used, with a stepped foundation um, on the, the east southeast side of it. Um, so just everyone have a look at have a look at the diagram. Are there any questions about the what we're looking at for change in change in grade? So, so just to confirm again, the uh, there's no grading in the driveway. Well, okay. this. The, the initial plan had a proposed contours all, on the driveway all the way out of the road. I guess that's not happening. So it's just the uh, the garage area where we're having grading. Is that correct? I mean, there is still a plan to sort of like take just a slight, try to like get a ever so slightly less steep incline from the street, you know, because as I said, you know, when the city dropped that sidewalk two feet, it made their driveway significantly steeper to the point where they can't access with a trailer hitch, you know, bike rack or whatever. Um, so basically it's just like an ever so imperceptible, just like slight steepening of the driveway. Um, I mean, that's still part of the plan. And does that process involve digging up the driveway and, and putting it back down again? Or what, what are we looking at in terms of disturbance? It's, it's a very, very subtle sort of scraping of the surface off. You know, there's basically just like a little high point like up towards the house is really the only thing you can actually do. Having looked at it with a variety of excavation contractors, you know, there's, you know, before you get, I mean, it's, it's merely almost superficial to an, a certain extent. Um, just to make it slightly more user friendly, you know, cause you can't obviously take it down to the point where it's flat because then you'd have this 12 foot wall next to the house of some sort of issue that you're dealing with. Um. All right. So the next question that popped up in the initial review is DPW, DPW's concerns with the erosion prevention and sediment control plan, the EPSC plan. Um, the question is what specifically is, a, is proposed for erosion and sedimentation, sedimentation control and where? And it says no proposed contours are shown around the garage or the patio. We've discussed that and figured that out. The plan, we wanna know more about potential stormwater impacts um, based on, on the design. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that, Will. Well, I mean, I think, you know, for the most part, you know, as I've mentioned is that, you know, essentially we're not necessarily changing any of the existing slopes. We're just kind of shifting the building over and keeping this hillside kind of as is for the most part. I mean, there'll be some very minor elements of change, you know, and, and um, very micro detail. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing that, you know, having spoken with Kurt was really the concern of the stormwater from the roof tied into the gutter system. And then the patio <clears throat> and his concern was whether or not if we link those drainage systems into the existing footer drain of the house that he wanted to make sure that that was going to the stormwater system and not the sewer system um so we were able to clarify that with the um permit the dpw permit from 2004 so i mean that's just terms of the sort of you know the long-standing stormwater issues and then of course during the construction we'll be following all of the sort of state of vermont um erosion and sediment control for excavation you know in terms of silt fence um, around the construction site there will be a little bit of a challenge in terms of the driveway you know in terms of vehicular access up and down i mean obviously they're not going to be using it while it's under construction but in terms of you know construction vehicles <clears throat> 
that you know will have to deal with um a very small just driveway width area that you know might be like a removable erosion control silt fence um compost socks um straw bales type of element but the majority of you know anything that's ground area um will be staked in and dug proper silt fence <clears throat> and well, the, i think that let me say the first site plan that Don provided had uh, the details in terms of how that is is done. Okay. What 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 is the uh, the finished surface material proposed to be for the driveway? Yes. Um, there ideally they would like to pave it. Um, that would be the plan. All right. And, and I guess where I was going with that is. Um, wouldn't that create more of a stormwater issue? Rather than I mean, in terms of, you know, yeah, I mean, technically, I mean, I think, you know, from a practical standpoint, you know, whether it's like a crushed stone stay mat driveway or right. a paved driveway, potentially still counting as an impervious surface. Um, you know, I mean, short of, I can't really think of anything that you would want as a driveway that would technically be permeable, um, especially on a slope of that nature, you know, so you know whether it's you know a final sort of crushed stone finish or pavement it's still going to be impermeable technically and are you, is what are the, the height what's the highest height of the uh proposed retaining wall to the to the, and the uh, yeah i i guess what, what i was getting at when you look at the some, retaining wall but Sorry, finish your thought, Kevin. We'll get into. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just putting it out there so we can consider it. Uh, is there is there is there a potential for creating a a, uh, uh, a hazard for for a kid or something that's playing in the area, you know, falling 12 feet onto a paved surface? No, I mean, I think the highest that that's going to be is, you know, it's going to, it's going to, so, you know, the, the north wall of the garage will be the highest sort of start point of that, um, you know, the actual retain, because the retaining wall is going to be, you know, part of it is the garage, you know, retaining the up the north slope of the hill. And then it sort of comes out past the garage, steps down. So it'll start, start stepping down from probably seven feet pretty dramatically, and then it'll sort of curve around. So. Okay. So seven <clears> feet <throat> is okay. That seven -ish, seven ish feet will sort of be like the sort of max height of that retaining wall for the parking area. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. So I, I have a question, a follow up question. You're saying that the grade is not being changed significantly, but I'm, I feel like um, once you put a building where there wasn't one before, isn't the water going to move differently across the yes. site? That was where I was well, going. Well, there is a garage already there, so it's essentially not going to be acting that much differently than it currently is. And there's no gutters on the current garage, um, you know, and we're going to have obviously, you know, any sort of, you know, upslope water that's coming down to the back of the garage will be, you know, sort of hit the foundation and go down into the perimeter drains and then go to the um, stormwater system, you know, so really there's um, You know, and even anything that comes down from the existing slope. And then it will land on the patio and then go into, um, as Don specs there, there'll be sort of a, um, you know, what does he call it technically? The yard, yard drain. Yes, the yard drain. So anything to the sort of east of the garage will come down and sort of hit that patio. I mean, currently it just comes down and saturates into the yard or does whatever, you know. So, I mean, um, you guys, you have the, um, the sort of proposed and the existing site plans that I provided, correct? So, I mean, essentially we're just taking a smaller garage away and then shifting yeah. a slightly larger garage over to the east a little bit more, so. Yeah, um, I, I know it, as constructions projects go, it's a pretty minor a minor thing and it's it's pretty much like no net, no real net change, but I guess I'm just, I'm pushing a little bit to try and understand because when it comes to water flowing down a hill, six feet matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, yeah. So I just want, yeah, I know yeah. you, I know what you can see. I just trying to make myself make it visual for, for others. Yeah. yeah, there will be some, there will be some change, you know, from what's currently there to, you know, the sort of proposed, but ultimately I think, you know, based on my experience, you know, building on some steep sites in Montpelier as well as, you know, Don's um, perspective who happened, he just lives down the street. So, you know, he and I have been on site a couple of times. Um, 
he doesn't see it necessarily as, as, as a major issue. Um, okay. as, as I said, you know, obviously, you know, following best practice for, you know, during construction and then making sure that we deal with, you know, any kind of more longstanding um, stormwater issues. Okay. So I think I just heard you say that you're adding stormwater treatment in several places on the site where none currently exists. So we are seeing a net increase in the amount of, uh, uh, what are they called? Treat infrastructure to, to treat stormwater. Is that, is that accurate? So it's going to be better than now, you know, the plan will be as it'll be, you know, better suited to, to handle any sort of, you know, surge events or whatnot um, compared to the current um, situation. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, good. So I keep saying we're going to talk about steep slopes and then I talk about erosion and stormwater. It really all knits together as we go through the criteria. So um, we're flowing like water. Um, so what we're going to do next, what's that? think like water is the first lesson for a good builder that's right that's what my dad used to say about our dirt road when he was in charge of plowing it <laughs> um all right so we are going to next uh do, do our next task which is to consider the ex uh, bottom of page five in our staff report consider the extent to which the proposed development conforms to the design standards established in section 3007h requiring that development on steep slopes shall be safe and not have an undue adverse effect on slope stability. The ve development shall therefore be designed to. So we're gonna go through these criteria. The first one is to limit the amount of disturbance clearing of existing natural vegetation and impervious surface in order to minimize potential for erosion, stormwater runoff, flooding and water quality impairment. So we've just talked a lot about that. Do, um, do board members have any more questions or clarifications on that one? No. Okay. The next is that we're not, we, this is, um, it, we may not create slopes steeper than 30%. And the diagrams show that none are being created because that spot where the parking space is going is where the building used to be, right? So no new digging out to make that. Three, preserve distinctive natural features, the general topography of the site and existing natural vegetation. I guess we haven't talked too much about vegetation. Could you just tell us very briefly, Will, um, is there vegetation? Is it being removed? Is, are things being replanted? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a few trees that will be taken down sort of to the north of the existing garage that just there's no way to be able to sort of keep them in terms of proper excavation for the size of the footings that are going to be on that north wall. Um, so yeah, so I mean, short of like, you know, some very minor shrubs, um, two to three trees, nothing's being removed, you know, obviously grass, but you know, that'll all be replanted in, in okay. due time. All right, questions from board members about that one? All right, so then the next standard is that it must, the project must maintain or reduce the pre-existing rate and retain the pattern of stormwater runoff leaving the property. And I think we've just had a good discussion about how that is being managed. Okay. Produce a final grade that is compatible with the surrounding natural terrain. We've discussed how that is the case. Create a harmonious transition between graded slopes and the natural terrain. Um, do other do people have questions about that? Okay. Um, yeah, Rob. Well, yeah, I, I think um, it's really just checking a box uh, in the steep sows regs, but. Uh, showing the proposed contours in the area of the retaining wall. I'm just not really seeing them unless I'm missing something um, on the new site plan here. Let's take a look. Right, so what you're looking at is the, um, are you looking at in, the, on half on the left half of the parking space we see some contour lines and on the right half we don't is that what you're referring to rob right and i just didn't know if there was any grading that's going to happen on the other side of that wall on the west side of the wall maybe will yeah yeah i mean there will be you know the the hillside returning into that stepped um you know, I mean, the, the looking at the site plan, you know, provided by Grenier, it makes it look significantly more dramatic than it actually is in reality. Um, the last time I was up there with Lucas Gendron looking at the foundation, it was 
much more modest looking, but yes, we will be, you know, just to sort of pop you back in here. Um, that you're saying this area right here, you know, coming into that stepped wall, correct? Well, can you share your screen so that you can show us with your I didn't I didn't hit the share button. There we go. <laughs> I had it selected, but this area right here is what you're concerned with, Rob, right? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I think um, that, and then also this, well, the same thing on the other side of the garage. Um, yeah, I mean, it's essentially just the sort of, you know, just keying into the hillside, sort of, you know, the existing slopes. We're not necessarily going to be changing them. It's just kind of tuck the building in and the slopes in their natural form will, for the most part, um, plus or minus, you know, some yeah. detail, but, um, you know, we're not necessarily creating any new slopes, you know, it's just, we're just, the, the hillside, the building is going tucked into the hillside. Um, okay. Well, a related so. question that I would have is on the east side of the stepped retaining wall, which we're looking at. Thank you for pulling that up. Um, I, I can't quite describe what I'm looking at, but it looks like if I'm reading my contours right, can, can that be erased on the final plan? Because it looks like it's hilly on the yeah, left side of your car and flat on the right. Yeah, that's definitely something I can bring up with Don. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because that's going to be flat. Yeah, thought so. There will be a weird slope parking area. Right, this isn't an off-road vehicle dealership where we have to show what the car can do in the lot yeah. or keep our car on flat ground wherever possible. All right, yeah, thanks yeah, like, for tidying that up. That would be helpful. Yeah, so basically right there. But yeah, essentially, I mean, the hillside is just going to sort of die into that stepped wall right there. Um, same on this side as well. Great. Um, that yeah, I, mean, I think oh, on the like on the on the other, um, since you aren't really creating any contours, I think it'd be helpful to maybe show some more elevations on that wall um, because that is essentially your proposed contour. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just all I'm doing is you know it seems like a good project. I'm just looking at the. Um, the regs for um, the engineer planner report. Um, and it's, you know, number one is existing and proposed grades, um, just to make sure that for consistency that that box is, is effectively checked. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Nope. Thank you, Rob. That's a, that's a good eye and important detail. And when, if someone else comes back to work on this in another 17 years, um, the, the discussion has been captured. That's important. All right, so um, let's move on to the next standard then. Um, avoid creating continuous unbroken slopes or linear slopes. We've shown how that's done to a minimal degree. Um, contour graded slopes by varying the slope increment to produce a final grade that undulates both vertically and horizontally. Um, and I think we've, we've shown that that is the case. Do, does anyone have questions about that? Nope. Okay. Very cut and fill banks and terraces to produce a final grade that has visual interest and allows for naturalistic landscaping. No cut and fill banks or terraces are being created. Consider the use of retaining walls and terracing rather than cut and fill banks. And indeed that has been considered um, yes. at the back of the garage as well as to the left of the park, the west of the parking spot. Vary the pad elevations on sites with multiple structures, not applicable. Provide roads and drives that follow existing contours. We're not creating new roads. Use compact building forms or multi-story buildings to minimize building footprint. Um, this is a compact form of, for a garage that mimics the existing one. Split or multi-level building forms, not, not applicable. So that, that brings us through our steep slopes standards. Are there any last questions? We've had a good discussion. I appreciate that. Um, are there any other questions about those standards? No. Okay, great. All right, thanks everybody. Um, so that was, that was one big thing. Um, Let's move then to the special use standards and our evaluation of the special use standards begins on the bottom of page eight, top of page nine. So we, we haven't encountered special use standards too, too much as a group. So I just wanna remind you and those who are listening that the special use standards are supplemental requirements that come into play when a particular use is proposed in, in any zoning district. It's the, the standards are about the use, not about the location of where it's taking place. So in this case, the special use that we're talking about is a fence proposed to be over six feet high. 
And that, that fence that we're talking about is the retaining wall over by the parking area. And Will, I think you said to us that um, it's, nine, it's nine feet wide, but you expect it to be about seven feet tall maximum at its highest. Hmm. Well, I think you're on mute, Will. There we go. Um, you know, I think it's it's hard to say exactly like the precise site, and a lot of it has to do with sort of how the sort of final grading behind that on that north wall will be. But essentially, um, here, let me. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. Are you seeing the right screen? We're seeing we're seeing your. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yep. There we go. Can you see that now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, this corner here would be the highest point, and then it would it would step down in this direction, and then also step down in this direction. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, what do you think would be the maximum? Or, I mean, there must be a range within which you expect this to fall. Could you let us know what that? I would right say here. between seven and nine in height. Hard to say. I mean, it's engineered to be a nine foot wall in the back of the garage. Mm -hmm. You know, and whether it steps two feet right at this corner mm -hmm. down to seven and then steps down and wraps around, or if it comes out mm -hmm. two feet at nine feet and then steps down to 10 feet, you know, those details are somewhat verify and field. Um, you know, it's engineered to be nine feet tall all the way across if it needs to be. Um, but I doubt, based on my observations of the existing site conditions, that that will be the case. So it's going to be a very tight wall going from starting at nine and stepping all the way down to zero over the course of 16 feet, you know, nine foot linear and then another amount okay. of linear space. All right, thank you. Um, so the the thing we need to find as a board is um, walls walls shall not exceed the, exceed exceed a height of six feet unless approved by the board um, under the regulations for buffer transition. Where, where are the sorry? I need to pull up the standards here. Um, Meredith, am I missing the standards within the? Oh, on page nine of the staff report. Yeah. Um, so wall, like you said, walls in the side or rear yard shall not exceed a height of six feet unless, and the first of the three options for unless is approved by the board or required under the regulations for buffer screening or security purposes. So there is a very general board allowed to approve a higher side or rear wall without any other qualifiers. So we don't have to find that certain standards are met or certain conditions are met in order to approve. It's just pure board discretion. Pretty much. That's what it appears to be. You know, and I think it, it goes back to the purposes of this whole provision, right? Um, but yeah, the, the subpart one of the exception of the unless is approved by the board. Okay. Which I think especially you know, when you're when you're considering a steep slope situation, my thought is because they're connected and you have engineering behind it, that that may be a way to, to help the board mm -hmm. figure out the answer to that question. Okay. Yes. But this is probably the only section in the zoning where we don't have standards to follow. It's great. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, no criticism, just different. Well, um, it's very, there's very other very specific allowances, I think, right. for walls or fences, but also because I think a fence would be different than a retaining wall. And that might be one reason there's so much discretion in that first yeah. space. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's good that it's that it's worded like this. It gives us the ability to to be flexible uh, and to for, pro, you know, for projects to, you know, uh, uh, be flexible as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is a different situation than say yep. a fence in a front yard like we've talked about before or a fence that has a screening purpose like we've talked about before. We're talking about a retaining wall that's part of a um, part of a larger project. Um, so do board members have any questions or concerns about approving this exception to the height limit? 
Well, I just, just my concern was that, you know, if you have a nine foot wall in a, in a paved area down below and kids in the neighborhood, it's just that you're going to want to be, be cognizant of that and, and, and plan for it, you know, having some sort of uh, uh, barrier. So, you know, a little tyke isn't going to go, you know, tumbling head over heels. Yep. Um, I speak from I, personal experience. Tumbling tykes. We've seen it happen. We've seen, seen it, it happen. happen. <laughs> Speaking as someone who has a, how tall is that wall outside my house? Well, it's probably at least 15 or 20 feet tall. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's like 16, Kate. It's what? It's at least 16 feet. <laughs> um, yeah. So is the, um, is the water intended to flow like, over the face of the wall, or is it going to be also captured in a fluid drain? That's going to be captured by the footing drain. There'll be okay. probably an eight inch minimum from top of wall to grade. So any down slope will just go down and then just flow out. Okay. So. All right. Well, I think we can see how this wall at its, at its increased height um, serves the project. Um, is there anything else we want to discuss about this? No? Okay. We won't spend any more time there than necessary. Um, great. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just um, kind of go back and go through as we as we always do and confirm that folks have what they need to know um, regarding the other standards, most of which, according to the staff report, appear to be met. So we'll go back to page three of the staff report starting with our, our general standards. Our use standards, uh, single family is allowed and the use isn't changing, so that standard is met. 3002, 3003 are dimensional standards and accessory structures, setbacks, things like that. Um, the question in here is, um, the, could you tell us, Will, the final, I think you sent us this, well, because you sent us the site plan, we have the final garage, it's 22 by 26. That's, that's the foundation footprint. There's roof overhangs that, you know, make it to some odd actual dimension. But, okay. Uh, Meredith, this. in terms of the actual square footage. Yeah, for it. impervious calculation. Yeah. What did, let's see. Um, um, you know, as it is, you're at, it's at 32% impervious. It can go up to... 50%. Um, so I think, I think I would just ask that you don't have to do the math this second, but on the final site plan, yeah. please include the coverage with the overhang. Yeah. I, I mean, I had it shown at 750 square feet. Okay. In the garage. Hmm. Okay. With the overhang. Yeah. Okay, so Mer what Meredith raised, and which I, I know we're, we're getting to the bottom of, is just um, reconciling the different parts of the application and make sure we, we know what we're talking about here. Okay, 750. Very good. Um, better to have more than not enough. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, all right, so um, next question. Well, I do have one question about the setbacks and the uses. This one's for Meredith. Um, I believe that at first I found myself wondering, are we allowed to have a parking space in the side setback? And then I saw the part of the regulation that said parking for residential purposes is allowed any place where there is a legal driveway. And so I believe that this parking space falls under the, within the legal driveway area. Is that your take on it, Meredith? That is my take on it. Um, it so a few, a couple of revisions back in the regulations, there used to be a, a like surface parking or I think parking was listed in our accessory use table where we talk about dimensions. Um, and it was allowed, I think it was allowed up to the property line at that point. I am honestly not quite sure why that got taken out of there, <laughs> but um I, I think that we look at it as a as part of the driveway here because it is a residential driveway. Okay, just wanted to be extra sure about that and have that discussion on the record. Thank you. Great. Um, 
Okay, so then we're moving into 3004, which is the demolition permit and the details that we received in the staff report showed that the demolition will be undertaken in accordance with the regs and things will be removed from the site within 60 days. Um, as far as riparian areas and wetlands or vernal pools, these are not found on the site or within 800 feet. So those criteria are met. Um, we've discussed steep slopes. Any last questions about steep slopes? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, we I guess uh, I hate to keep beating the dead horse, but uh, that'll be the, the horse. Uh, um, so, I mean, it, it just sort of looks like from the new site plan that any work done in the driveway, um, you know, even if it's going to be minuscule, um, you know, won't be disturbing steep slopes. I think there was an initial figure that was put forward that showed slopes greater than 30% um, in the driveway and that area being being graded. But it appears that maybe there's a more recent survey that generated the contours for this new site plan because um, they are different. Um, and so I just sort of like to check the box that uh, there is no disturbance of steep slope in the on the driveway, um, which appears to be what you're conveying here. Got to keep remembering that button. Um, Grenier was out there recently um, doing some field surveying to just to sort of reconcile the LIDAR data with what was actually, you know, which is a little bit, um, you know, it's, yeah, I'm not sure in terms of if they did, because Don did do some driveway um, sort of proposed grading. I mean, I think whether one of the site plans that you have, not the most recent one, he had some more accurate detail, but um, yeah, I mean, I, as far as the steep slopes and looking at the um, original slope map, it does show some steep slopes on the driveway. Um, Do you think it would be possible to have that um, integrated into the plan documents, the site plan? Any any new Which, information about driveway slopes? Yeah, I mean, I think we can we can get that. Um, you know, as I said, it's going to be very very minor um, change if there's much change at all that can happen <laughs> ultimately. Yeah, just due to the nature what's existing conditions and okay. connecting point A to point B. All right, thanks. Thanks. Is that good, Rob? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. All right, so that's steep slopes. Um, erosion control, section 3008, we've discussed. Are there any other questions? Similarly, stormwater management. Okay, great. So we haven't, we've talked a little bit about access and circulation, making sure that um, it's safe to come and go and move within the site. We understand better now how a vehicle's gonna get in and out. Um, are there, and it's an existing uh, access onto town road. Any questions about this? No. We do note that, um, as you know, we'll work within the city right away. We'll require the construction and access permit. So I'm sure it's on your list. Um, yeah. Parking and loading areas, um, you said that the um, parking space is eight feet by 18 feet. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, a, a, it's been a while since sitting in your shoes, but I do recall that I designed it to the zoning regulated parking requirements. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> um, Nine by 18 or eight by 18? Eight and a half by 18. Thanks, Meredith. Eight and a half. Yes, eight and a half <laughs> by 18 is the, the standard parking space size. Great. I think I always just default to nine feet for ease. Yep, and that's, it used to be, nine feet wide used to be the standard, um, but they they bumped it down to eight and a half when they rewrote the regs in 2018. Good. Yep. All right, great. And Meredith, do we need that labeled on the site plan? I, I think that would be helpful because it's not actually in there and it's sometimes tricky to check with the, um, scale okay so that's just another little tweak um great so then moving on to the special use standards we've we've discussed the the height of the wall um are there other questions from the board about this project before we deliberate okay so so based on what we talked about i noted four little tweaks to the site plan i want to make sure i got this right um 
One is what we just talked about by adding the dimensions of the parking space. Another is to add any um, data obtained in the field, reconciling with the LIDAR, with the site conditions. Um, note, making note of the existing and proposed contours um, as, we, as we've talked about. And then tidying up the parking spot and the, the stepped wall to show that the parking spot's gonna be flat um, and making the, the wall part of the contour. Um, does that sound right to board members? It does help me, yes. And to the applicant. Well, on the last part, that's also in the garage, inside the garage, the proposed garage, um, the same contour issue. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Okay, great. Um, all right, thank you. Good discussion. Um, with that, uh, this I will, will, we have been during, as we've been, working on Zoom, we have, during our time working on Zoom, we've been deliberating in a closed deliberative session. And we've been doing that for all applications, regardless of how simple or complex they are. So um, when we move into deliberative session, it is not a comment on the quality or um, acceptability of the project. It is simply our process until, uh, until the end of um, DRB by Zoom. Nor, so, the, nor the complexity of the project, I would also add to that. That's right. Because typically with the, uh, uh, the old, the old uh, protocol, um, if it was, if it was more complicated, then uh, uh, can simply be uh, ascertained at the uh, public hearing, we would, we would vote on it in open session. That's uh, right. Yeah. That's right. We hope to return to that at some point soon. So um, with that, I will accept a motion to close the hearing on this application. <laughs> I always get this wrong, don't I? To close the public portion of the hearing on this application and move to deliberate in deliberative session when the public meeting is, is adjourned. Is that's, there a motion to that effect? Spot, spot on, Kate, and I'll make that motion. Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second? Second. Second from Rob. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'll, I'll call the roll. Um, Kevin? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Roger? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I also vote yes. Very good. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Will. Good to see you. Um, and we'll have information in written form um, when the decision is written up as soon as we can. Okay. All right. Nice. Thank you. Have you yeah. See you later. All right, folks. Um, in the other business category, our next meeting is March 15th. Um, and Meredith, is there any other, other business? Uh, no. I don't, oh, uh, uh, yes, actually sort of there is. Um, so this past Wednesday, uh, the city council approved changes to the zoning ranks. Um, so I will be sending those around. It's, as I said at the beginning of the staff report, there's nothing that impacted tonight's hearing. Um, the changes in large part had to do with tidying up residential zoning uses. We had to make some changes um, to anything to do with accessory dwelling units due to some changes at the statute, the state level. Um, and while we were doing that, we just cleaned up some definitions um, to make the different categories of residential uses clearer so that, and also to avoid places where we had gaps where like we had some special uses defined in chapter 310 that weren't listed in the use table and it wasn't clear maybe how you looked at them for um, density or it wasn't even clear what zoning districts they were allowed in. Um, so there's been a lot of tweaks to fix that. Um, and there are a few other adjustments. I will be circulating 
um, a new copy of those regs, but I'll also send you the final summary that is a red line to show exactly what things were changed. Great. Um, don't think it's really going to change our jobs that much, other than it'll make it easier on on the administrative end before it even gets to you to figure out where things fall. Meredith, can you can you just quickly summarize what the state changes were that impacted the uh, the effort to to change ours? Um, so the state changes had to do with accessory dwelling units yeah. and not allowing, um, um, barring certain restrictions. So um, we had to change, I think it was the, like the minimum size for our max size for an accessory dwelling unit. I, I can't remember it all because Mike leads those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then there was also a situation where um, towns are no longer allowed to ban, uh, to, to put, um, you, you, sorry, let me restart. We can no longer consider character of the neighborhood when looking at, I think it's one and two dwelling unit uses, which basically means we had to change the um, uses, anything that was a conditional use, any, any district that had one and two dwelling units as conditional uses, that's wiped out now because the only difference with conditional use in general for those was character of the neighborhood. That was the new thing that was being thrown in that wasn't considered otherwise. So one and two dwelling units will be permitted uses, meaning administrative site plan, you know, administrative approval in all zoning districts now. If anyone's interested in diving in, it's Act Number One Seventy Nine from last year. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Mike usually handles those types of things, and it just flows down to me, and I don't re keep it all in my head. Um, but there's a good, there's a decent summary on um, the city's website, and okay, yes, good. share that link. Great. Um, so that'll make it into the uh, the record of this public meeting. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, is there any other other business or announcements? Okay, um, next we will move into deliberative session. Um, we've had the motion to do that. We have the link in our email inboxes from Meredith. So is there a motion to close the public meeting and move to a deliberative session? Is that right? Just close the public yes. meeting. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay fine, I make the motion. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody else to Motion by Kevin. <laughs> I'll second. Second by Roger. All right. We'll take, uh, is there any discussion? All right, then. Kevin. Yes. Joe. Yes. Rob. Yes. Roger. Yes. Michael. Yes. And myself, Kate, I vote yes. Very good. Let's rejoin. Um, let's go straight to the deliberative session. Um, I'll see you there. Thank you all for attending and for all who participated or watched, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mer Meredith, you've sent us a link? Yeah, it should be in your email. Okay, thank you.